Good morning. Happy Easter. Off our uh, program this morning with some announcements. I have some wonderful announcements to start off with. Uh, we have some birthdays and anniversaries uh, in, our, in our congregation today. So let us start off with uh, tomorrow is Daniel Beard's birthday and Sue Gauker's birthday and Susie God's birthday. We wish them all a happy birthday. Later on in the week on Friday, it's Ray Holmes' birthday and Becky Thompson's birthday. And we're so thrilled to uh, wish each one of you a happy birthday. And I promise I'll sing to all of you when I have a great accompaniment when Cindy's back with me with the piano. And uh, also want to wish Rich and Judy Lentz a very, very happy anniversary. They celebrated their anniversary uh, on the 9th of the month. So congratulations uh, to Rich and Judy and uh, happy birthday to those who I've mentioned already. I wanted to start off again by talking about uh, prayers and we appreciate all of your prayers and I thank you all personally for for uh, you know just keeping in touch with each other and all the uh, emails and, and texts I've been getting and it's been fantastic and I and I thank each one of you who are on our phone tree because it's a great way for each one of us to keep connected during this time that the uh, church is not uh, functioning but I do want to tell you that we are hoping that weekly you will be getting a Sunday service uh, sent to you uh, via uh, email that you can open up and we can still be together uh, in worship on a Sunday morning. So uh, in prayer, I ask you to kindly keep a few people in prayer. Mary Ann Freeby called me and uh, her niece um, has been uh, diagnosed with uh, COVID-19 virus. So we ask you to please keep uh, this young woman and her family in prayer. We ask you to keep Paul and Terry Leonard in prayer. Paul, as you know, is uh, receiving hospice care and uh, He's hanging in there, but uh, that family needs a lot of love and support during this tough time. I ask uh, Ruth Cummins in prayer. Ruth is going to have a uh, 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 some cancer surgery uh, next Tuesday, and we ask you to keep Ruth in prayer. Also, uh, we have uh, Charles Miller who is uh, going through some. Uh, some uh, blood disorder and uh, Charles is starting chemotherapy treatments very shortly so please keep him in uh, in your prayer and also your prayer list uh, Mary will send a, a new copy out to you this Thursday please keep that handy because it's so important that we maintain our, our good prayer life and and during this time that we're, we're apart uh, feel free to contact the office uh, and let us know if you have any special requests and we'll be glad to, to put them on there and a very 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 heartfelt and special thank you you folks have been fantastic uh, we've been able to uh, you know I believe this week we we had another uh, large deposit close to five thousand dollars that we're you know for this month so you know just by your helping and your assisting as you are you know we're maintaining our church and I want you to know during our absence that Christopher has been able to do a fantastic deep deep cleaning and between the kitchen and the fellowship hall and moving forward everything has been sanitized and cleaned and we're moving into the church next week so just want to uh, keep you updated please feel free to contact me by phone email or text anytime day or night that you need me and know that you're being prayed for constantly you're missed and loved and hopefully we'll be back together before too long
first lesson today is from Exodus, starting with chapter 14, verse 10 to 15, verse 1. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up in panic when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Escape through the Red Sea. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops, his chariots and his charioteers. When my glory is displayed through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. Then the angel of God, who had been leading the people of Israel, moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The cloud settled between the Egyptian and Israelite camps. As darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lighting up the night. But the Egyptians and Israelites did not approach each other all night. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground, with walls of water on each side. Then the Egyptians, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioteers, chased them into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. He twisted their chariot wheels, making their chariots difficult to drive. Let's get out of here, away from these Israelites, the Egyptians shouted. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. When all the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, Raise your hand over the sea again. Then the waters will rush back and cover the Egyptians in their chariots and charioteers. So as the sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. And then the waters returned and covered all the chariots and charioteers, the entire army of Pharaoh. Of all the Egyptians who had chased the Israelites into the sea, not a single one of them survived. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground, as the water stood up like a wall on both sides. That is how the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. And the Israelites saw the bodies of the Egyptians washed up on the seashore. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him. They put their faith in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The word of God. Today's psalm is 118 verses 15 through 29. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you. Give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. You owe oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Second lesson is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, starting at the first verse. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed, you welcomed it then, and you still stand firm. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and by the twelve, and after that he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James, and later by all the apostles. Last of all, although I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. For I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I am not even worthy to be called an apostle, after the way I persecuted John's, God's church. But whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me, and not without results. For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. Yet it was not I, but God, who was working through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach. For it all preach the same message you have already believed. The word of God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and happy Easter. I am so happy to be with you all in, your, in the comfort of your home and we hope and pray that each one of you is safe and sound. This morning, I'd like to start off our service with a few announcements we have. We ask you to continue praying for all of the folks that are on the prayer list that Mary has sent you uh, on Thursday and you will continue to get those. And a very special prayer this week goes out to Ruth Cummins. Ruth is going in for uh, surgery on Tuesday and we ask you to keep Paul Leonard in your prayers as you know Paul is on hospice and he continues uh, you know uh, on that treatment and a very special prayer for Catherine Burdett um, continues to uh, to hang in there after her 100th birthday party and uh, but uh, we're in uh, nursing homes uh, that are you know unable to get any visitors keep them in prayer and we thank you so much for all your cards, and I want to say a very special thank you to each one of you for, for uh, really embracing our caller list, and uh, through that we have been able to keep contact with each and every one of you, and we thank you very much for that. This morning, Easter Sunday, 2020, let us begin in prayer. Oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to start off our service this morning with a beautiful prayer that's so appropriate for this morning's service. Let us pray. God, our Father, by raising Christ your Son, you conquered the power of death and opened for us the way to eternal life. Let our celebration today raise up and renew our lives by the Spirit within us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This morning, we will, we will read the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out 
to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The gods shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you were looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said it would happen. Come and see where his body was laid. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There, remember what I have told you. The woman ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's true. It's all true. Christ has risen. That's the only thing said today. In some ways, it's the only thing that can be said. That Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. The only thing I really have to tell you this morning, nothing more, nothing less. It's the same thing the angels told the woman who went to Jesus' tomb. He didn't tell them once, but twice. He is not here. He has been raised. He has been raised from the dead. It was true. They saw Jesus. They touched him. They heard his voice. It was all true. St. Matthew doesn't offer much more than that in his account of the gospel. He doesn't explain how it's happened, only that it did. And it's the interesting part for us living the truth of this story is that we know the details of this beautiful story. The truth of the story as he tells it, it's earth shaking. It changes the ground in which we stand and the way in which we live. Every one of you could name the darkness you have faced over the last year. Some of you are today sitting in the midst of darkness. Collectively, we are all facing this COVID-19 pandemic together this year. It may not know what your darkness is or has been, but I know it's real. That's why I think we come together today wanting to be told and reminded that this story is true. And you know what? You came to the right place. You will not be disappointed. The angel's message to the woman in today's gospel is the church's message to us today. He has been raised from the dead. It's still true. The story is true. You can count on it. It's for your life and it's for mine. It was true yesterday. It is true today and it will be true tomorrow that the promise of today, God never leaves anyone in the darkness of the tomb. The stone has been rolled away from the tomb. The day dawns with new light. The earth quakes to celebration and joy. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed for you and I. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. I conclude this morning's service with a special least of us. May the glory and greatest time of year bring peace and happiness to you and those that you hold most dear. May our risen Savior always be there by your side to bless you most abundantly and be your loving guide. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God's peace be with you. May God's peace be with you. May God's
God's peace be with you. May God's peace be with you. May God's peace be with you. May